come a time in the future when I shan't mind about this anymore. When I can look back and say quite peacefully and cheerfully how silly I was. No, no, I don't want that time to come ever. I want to remember every minute. Always. Always to the end of my days. Brief Encounter is a film that's directed by David Lean that came out in 1945. So Brief Encounter is a Criterion Patriot pick from Tyree. I only have one other Criterion Patriot pick left, and that's Minding the Gap, which is also from Tyree, and I am extremely excited to talk about that documentary. But Brief Encounter, as I mentioned, is a film directed by David Lean, and shockingly, I have never seen a David Lean film. I know that's fucking insane, considering the fact that he directed Lawrence of Arabia, Dr. Zhivago, and also The Bridge on the River Kwai, all three monumental films of the history of cinema, and I haven't seen any of them yet. Um, so those are some huge blind spots for me. So needless to say, according to every film critic and every film lover in the world, uh, David Lean has made a handful of bangers, and I'm kind of glad I started with A Brief Encounter, because it's also a banger. Um, I really love this film. This film had a lot going for it, and I basically didn't know anything about it going into it. First and foremost, I love the fact that this film has stylistic elements to it that aren't like really flashy or that noticeable, but they are there and they really do elevate the film in a number of different ways. And the reason why I say that is because essentially this film is about a romantic affair, and this film, even with that premise, feels incredibly psychological um i mean yes it's it's drama and it's romance and everything but for me personally i took away a huge psychological element to this film and for me it is mostly because of the stylistic elements that are brought forth to this film i mean yeah the staggering performance from celia johnson does play a huge contribution as well um because she does have quite a demanding job in this film because she does have to convey um, you know, the sense of psychological turmoil that she's going through. I mean, almost throughout this entire film, I feel like she is suffering and, you know, she had to put her mind and body through that. And I feel like, you know, her performance, you know, does play a huge role in that. But just a combination of the sound and the camera work and the lighting and pretty much a lot of the aesthetic choices and a lot of different moments really make the audience feel that we're inside the mind of this main character as we're experiencing in this really intimate way this severe tug and pull of morals that she's feeling throughout her entire experience. Just in a lot of different moments in this film, the way the sound kind of fades in and fades out, um, the way that the lighting will, in one sweeping scene, will darken or brighten, um, it just really enhances and illuminates that psychological element um, that, again, I think is one of the strongest elements of this film that not only separates it, but just immerses the audience into something that does feel a bit unique and effective. And throughout the entire film, we do get a lot of voiceover narration of the main character's inner thoughts, which most of the time I really dug, but there are some other moments where I felt like our main character was just kind of restating something that the audience obviously inferred or experienced. Um, so in those moments, it felt like a little bit on the nose and, and unnecessary. But for the most part, I feel like the voiceover narration, again, really does do a decent job and immersing the audience inside of this character's mind and also giving us a lot of unique details about her complex feelings regarding the situation that I don't think we would have just gotten visually. And I did find the romance in this film to be quite compelling and that's really important and very difficult because not only is it important just because it's a romance and if the romance isn't compelling, then you have nothing. But it's it's a romance that, as I mentioned, is is part of an affair. So I personally feel like it is quite difficult to get the audience to care about these characters because of the fact that they are committing an act that, in most people's eyes, is morally wrong. Um, especially considering the fact that this film doesn't go the one-dimensional route. That's another thing that I really enjoyed about this film. Because, you know, in terms of their actual married home lives, especially the glimpses that we get from the main character's life, uh, played by Celia Johnson. Um, her home life and her husband and her kids, like, honestly, a lot of that seems fine and dandy. Like, sure, maybe the husband 
isn't paying as much attention to her as he should be anymore. Um, but overall, like, I like that her home life and especially her husband, um, you know, aren't painted to be like these uh, immoral, abusive jerks. Um, honestly, they seem like pretty decent people. So I really love how this film doesn't go the cheap route by just painting her husband and her family as you know, to be really irritating or really abusive. Um, you know, therefore forcing the audience to care about her affair. But here it goes the more difficult route of, um, you know, being a bit more complex and nuanced about it. And uh, even though her home life's really okay, you know, we as the audience somehow get swept up into her romance, even though it's pretty icky. And it results in making the audience feel as psychologically conflicted as our main character, which is, I mean, it's, it's the most effective thing you could possibly do with this film. And David Lean achieved that in the best way he could. I also just think that Celia Johnson and Trevor Howard in this film just had excellent chemistry. And um, just the dynamic that they shared between them, um, you know, does feel natural and it feels, um, you know, it feels authentic to their situation. And um, yeah, their, their, their performances and how they complement each other character wise um, really does work and makes the audience care about their romance. And I also really loved how this film demonstrates how in just one instance, our moral compass can be exposed to be a lot more fickle than we anticipated. A second ago, you never seriously thought about being romantically involved with anybody else. And then something happens, and again, in a split second, that just becomes your life now. It really goes to show that at the end of the day, chaos reigns, and no matter how many confines you put on your life, whether it be marriage and kids and what have you, there's always that little bit of chaos that's going to penetrate your life and just... um Make your life a living hell. But yeah, so much of this film really works. I found so much of it effective and compelling. Uh, just from a screenwriting and a directing standpoint and an acting standpoint. Um, a lot of it just really works so well. So I'm going to give Brief Encounter a strong 8 out of 10. Yeah, really great film. I enjoyed it a lot. And I think it's about time that I explore more of David Lean's filmography. Um, not really sure where to start next because the three of his films that I do know for him are just so monumental. I don't really know which one to start with. Um, you know, my guess would be Lawrence of Arabia, but if anybody else has a suggestion in that department, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, that's about it, guys. I know it's Criterion season. I haven't had the chance to go out to Barnes & Noble and do my thing, but... Um, I promise this upcoming week, it's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. That's about it. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about Brief Encounter, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.